It's not time for news review. Let's look at stories making headlines in the newspapers. And starting off with a finder for this morning that says, our first term economic record is unmatched in the Fourth Republic. Dr. Baumia challenges NDC and critics to provide any facts to dispute it. And we support bauxite mining in Atiwa Forest. That's according to the chiefs. And also on the front page, regular filth at Tema Station blamed on station manager's failure to pay service provider. The Daily Graphic says, um, practice accountable leadership. Assembly members charged at inauguration. And EC's posture injurious to democracy. Uh, that's according to Elvis Efri Yankra. Invest in Ghana. Tony Blair urges entrepreneurs. And the back page says, Operation Vanguard team to be deployed at Oda River Forest Reserve. And Graphic gets results again. Individuals who flout sanitation laws arrested. The Ghanaian Times says nationwide inauguration of assembly and unit committee members and unplanned haphazard development now. President tax all MMDAs. President touts success of government's economic programs. And court orders AG and IGP to produce CCTV footage on our sort of journalists. An alliance for new register urges Ghanaians to support EC. And killing of cop by armed robbers. Please nab owner of filling station. And... AFCFTA Secretariat will make Ghana attractive investment destination. That's according to Alan Chamanti on the back page of the Ghanaian Times. And Chief urges government to compel Lands Commission, EPA, to halt encroachment on Shai Osu Doku lands. And finally, the Daily Guide says, EC picks vendor for biometric register and Auditor General Bex or Safo Mafo. Bafoboni petitions CJ over judge. And AG's department appeals a Gojo bail. Um, the back page says, Mourinho blast Man U and give credit to Ronaldo's mother. And uh, LB supports 2020 Kweu Marathon. So uh, let's look at our, our panelists for this morning. And to my immediate left is uh, Pius Enam Hajide, who's Deputy Information Minister representing the NPP. And uh, next to him is Ebrahim Malba, who is a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. Gentlemen, good morning, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good thank morning, you. Mr. Thank you for having me. Yes, I hope all of you are doing very well. Very well. Just that the excruciating economy is not making it easy for people to go about their activities. <laughs> Talking about the economy, and let's start off with a find out before we get into a bit about corruption, because yesterday, uh, you know, Transparency International, a Ghana Integrity Initiative released uh, you know, the corruption perception in this Ghana scoring 41 again, as it did in 2018, also in 2019. But um, talking about the economy, Bamiya says the first term economic record of NPP is unmatched in the fourth quarter. I just do bits and pieces of uh, that story so that you would come in Abraham Malba. Since you say times are hard, he says the first term record is unmatched. So uh, this is a quote. He says, for virtually every economic measure, from inflation to interest rates, exchange rate depreciation, rate of increase of utility prices, social interventions like free SHS, job creation, infrastructure, etc. The data shows clearly that no government has achieved as much as the government of President Akufuado. And I challenge anyone to provide facts to dispute it. Irama Malaba is challenging you and others who say times are hard to provide facts to dispute it. Well, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. Fact number one. When the NDC was leaving office, a gallon of petrol was not what it is today. You get it? So, if Bamuya is saying that it is better now... This is economic indicators. He's giving you the indicators that he's talking about. Ah, I'm also talking about the economy. I'm not okay. talking about it. Literature. You're talking about macroeconomic indicators. I'm you're not talking about uh, I'm not, what I'm saying is it uh, literature. I'm saying that <laughs> fuel prices under the NDC was 14 Ghana cities. It's not correct. Under the NDC before we left power. <laughs> Today, a gallon of petrol hovers around 25 Ghana cities. So Baumia should go and tell this to the taxi drivers. What he's saying, he should say it to the truck truck drivers. Why? When we were leaving office, how much was the dollar? Tell me. Today, how much is it? We left the dollar at around 3.4. No. 
today. 3.72. 3 3 3 3 3 yeah. Now you go, what's the dollar today? 5.8. Bongia is not ashamed that after he has done his lectures and created the impression that he was going to be a better manager of the economy, today, his own administration has put together a committee to look at the reasons why the city is falling. Which reasons? Every first year economic students doing Econs 101 knows. And yet, this administration that has a man has put together a 40 member committee to look at the reasons for which the dollar is falling. You get the point. So, if today, he who is the economic messiah has been excluded from that committee, it's a clear indication that his own government has lost faith in him. And so the indicators, the economic hardship, are a reality. People have lost their jobs. People have been sent home. Banks have collapsed. People are unemployed based on the decisions they took to collapse the banks. <laughs> so what is Baumia talking about? And so, rather than apologizing to the people of this country, he still has the temerity to want to rob it in the face of the people of Ghana. And I think that that is most unfortunate. He's lost credibility, and I think the only way that he can make more sense about the economy of Ghana is when he keeps quiet. Mm. Two days ago, a lecturer from the University of Ghana, an economics lecturer, indicated that Baumia has failed the people of this country. <laughs> and so, it is absolutely clear from what is happening within the economic front that this country is not moving forward. Why? Didn't the Afrobarometer report indicate that this economy is headed in the wrong direction? So for him to set his own questions, and mark them as he, 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 uh, he, he, he does so with his, uh, his boss, the president, who gave himself 72%, is to say that you are your own referee as well as a player. Okay, but, and but, I think that mm -hmm. the people of this country will be worried this morning. Those who are finding it difficult to make ends meet. So he's, he's been worried this morning. Okay, so he's talked about a few indicators. He's, he said, he talks about, for instance, inflation. He talks about, for instance, depreciation of the currency. He talks, uh, for instance, about macroeconomic growth. He talks about rate of increase of utility prices. And, uh, you know, also talks about infrastructure and free SHS and job creation in the first term. I have told you that the same people who are saying they are creating jobs have collapsed banks. <laughs> and people have been unemployed. There were 138,000 jobs in 2019, according to the finance minister, when he presented budget to parliament. We have conflicting reports. The, the minister of information, uh, the minister of uh, finance says something else. Minister of Agri says another figure. This is within the, the public sector. Minister, I'm saying that we have conflicting reports about the number of people who have been employed. Okay. But in any case, every government mm -hmm. employs people. Okay. Free education. Mm. Why? Aren't we worried about the fact that we have a situation where the contact hours 
of our learners has been reduced. That's not true. The last term, they went to school for three weeks and went back home. The length of the stay might have been reduced, but the contact hours has been reduced. No, no, I'm saying that just last term, the one of the, the, I don't know which one, the yellow or red or green or which one, had to go back home it's after green three and weeks. Gold track. There are only two, green and gold. I don't know which of them had to go, to, which of them, I'm not interested in. <laughs> but they, they left, they left, they stayed in school for just three weeks and went back home. Sure. So, so get to. Mm -hmm. the emphasis should be on the quality of education. Okay. And not the quantity of education. Let me get to Pius. Um, so, um, Ibrahim Malba is throwing a challenge to you back. He says that um, if you're talking about indicators, the uh, best indicators are seen in the lives of Ghanaians. And you can see that fuel prices have gone up. Uh, you know, the city is depreciated. <laughs> And people are complaining. So why would you use that and say that uh, the economy is doing well and the evidence doesn't support that? Well, thank you very much, Winston. Good morning to you, to my colleague Amali and to the cherished viewers of uh, mm. TV3 New Day. Without a doubt, uh, having listened to Mr. Ma um, Mr. Maliba, it is clear that uh, the NDC is lost uh, in the happenings of the day. And uh, Dr. Baumia is spot on, he's, he's right. And I was expecting that on any of the, the indicators that uh, Dr. Uh, so eloquently and so truthfully talks about, uh, Amaliba was going to contradict, but he couldn't. And then he tried to do some gimmicks and gymnastics and play with words. But facts are facts. We met a deficit of what? And you see, let's not underrate the importance of these indicators. Winston, it's like driving your car and then the indicators on your dashboard that there's no fuel. You say, well, these are just indicators. Like the, the temperature is rising. You say, well, what? But the car is moving, and so on and so forth. These are critical. And these are the things that economic watchers watch to be able to either come and invest in your country. It builds confidence in all sectors, for instance, banking, and so on and so forth. And these are the things that lead to the comforts that we want at the micro level. So it, is, it cannot be a, a serious commentary that let us disregard the indicators. It cannot be for any serious political party, especially those who are aspiring to come back to Ghana and God forbid, if they come, they would also measure and they would use the indicators. Be before you go to the World Bank and before you go outside and make a case, it is the indicators with which you travel. And so it is a critical, critical matter that the people of Ghana should watch. Let us not be deceived that the indicators are meaningless. They are very meaningless. For instance, they are very meaningful. For instance, interest rate. Winston, if the interest rate is at 30%, what it means is that if you borrowed 100 CDs, you'll be paying about 30 CDs out of that 100 CDs for, as, as your, your interest. If the interest rate drops to 15% or even a single digit, 9% and so on and so forth, if you borrowed the same 100 CDs, instead of paying 30 CDs as your interest, it means now that you'll be paying either 15 CDs or 9 CDs if the interest rate were 15 or 9 respectively. And so you would have been making a savings and it's at the micro level. The 30%, the 30 CDs that you'd have, you would have paid if the interest rate was 30 if you pay 15 cities because the rate is at 15, you have made a savings for yourself uh, uh, of 15 cities. So these indicators are essentially a, a critical and we must watch it. And Dr. Baumia took us through a litany of these indicators. Not one has been contradicted by my brother Amaliba. We met a deficit of over 9.6% uh, there about. Today we are about 4.5%. Look 4 at 4.7% if I, I'll take it from you. Uh, look at inflation, for instance. And inflation is critical. Inflation tells you the rate at which prices of goods increase uh, uh, with, with respect to a, a specified, uh, a specific time. And so it is important. We met inflation at what? 15.4? Today, in inflation is in the single digits. We met employment. If you look at the data released by the Ghana Living Standards Survey, unemployment was at 11 0.2% uh, by the 2015 thereabout. Today, in 2019, uh, unemployment is around 7.3. We are bringing down unemployment and we are speaking to figures. And so let us be truthful and let us admit, look, even the depreciation of the, the, the CD that my brother speaks of, the records show, and I have it here, the records show that the NPP has performed way better than the NDC. 
In fact, uh, Mr. Maliba, you have to check your facts. You left the, the based, CD to the dollar on, at 4.2. Based on what? Is it based on based the on the percentage average increases percentage or increase. based on the CD value increases? No, the, the, the percentage increases <coughs> okay. over time. So you're looking at the percentage? Yes, increase. increases over okay. time. And we, uh, luckily for us, we have had three years. They have had three years in their first government. They have had three years in their second government as well. And so if you do an analysis of the comparative, you will notice that we have performed far better than the NDC. He said that they left the, the dollar at yeah, something. You, you, you also would agree, for instance, that if you're doing this analysis, so the NPP leaves office in 2009 and the CD to dollar is... Um, uh, one dollar is 1.12 mm -hmm. Ghana cities. So in, in that case, for instance, if the city at the end of the three years moves to say even 2 or 2.4, statistically, that's a 100% depreciation. Mm -hmm. But if you move to from 4.2 to 5.6, that is 1.4. Mm -hmm. But statistically, that is around 20-30%. Absolutely. So if you're looking at statistics, you mm -hmm. probably would say you're doing it. But if you go for the figures, you also would re recognize no, but, but, but that you also no, would no, have done Winston, better. Winston, mm -hmm. the, 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 the figures are a reflection of the nominal values. And so uh, it is very correct uh, to use the percentages. In fact, if you're doing an average, if, if you're doing an average, mm -hmm. you will advise, any serious economist will advise you, if you're doing an average, that they will advise you that you do the percentage. But the point I'm making is that Factually, incorrect positioning that the NDC left the dollar at three point something. Yes, it's it's actually four point two. You took it from one to one, one point one two at most, to two uh, four point two after eight years. Uh, after eight years, yes, okay. Yes. Uh, so, so that's your track record. So, when you are doing a comparative analysis, uh, and Winston, nobody has said that we are happy with the situation with the dollar. We are not. And that is why government is paying particular attention. And he goes on because maybe he doesn't uh, appreciate. Uh, the full intent of what happened the last time with the FX committee, and I'll come to that quickly. But this is a system that is showing uh, attention and paying attention and showing that it is interested. We want to do import substitution in this country. And so that is why we are doing one district one fact. Today, people who otherwise would have imported fruit juice are buying fruit juice from Ekunfi uh, Fruit Juice Factory. That would take some pressure off the city and stabilize it. Today, People who used to import toiletries, uh, uh, tissues, and so on and so forth from outside this country, they are now going to just buy from Brompton in, in Sawan prison. That will take some pressure off. And I can go on and on and on. And so there is a long-term plan that this government has. For the eight years that this uh, that the NDC was in power, if they had started a gradual process of industrialization, we would not have been, at, we would not have been where we are today. But you see... This thing about uh, uh, an FX committee taking over Finally. the job, taking over the job of the uh, the central bank and Dr. Baumia uh, is excluded. I think it's a it's a moot point. He was expecting Dr. Baumia to be the chairperson of the economic management team yes. to be on a subcommittee of the EPC. EPC is a, a, a economic uh, planning coordinating committee of the Ministry of, of Finance. And this FX committee is a subcommittee of that committee. Amaliba thinks that the vice president should come to that level. And because he's not on that committee, it means that there's confidence that belongs to him. In any case, the, 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 that committee has a clear mandate not to manage currency. That is not the mandate of the of okay. the of the, so of the committee. So you have to clearly understand that. In, in two minutes, oh, but, so that we yes. move to our you, see, you may have to be watching the I time. I have your time. Okay. Okay. for seven right. minutes, just okay. like he you did. See? Yes. Okay. Dr. Baumier's own aide was on radio saying that Dr. Baumier was not even aware about this committee and that this committee was set and put together on his blind side. I am saying that this is a clear indication of the lack of confidence How? in Dr. Baumier. How? Now, when you were talking, I, 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 could, yes, also, I could also explore like the way you did. He's from the MPP, I'm from the NDC, so probably we may be arguing based on our various interests. I talked about a lecturer, a senior lecturer of the University of Ghana. Let me read just one paragraph of what he said. <laughs> a senior lecturer of the, at the finance department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Lord Mensa, has rated the MPP very low in economic management. According to him, the MPP whiskey in economy, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baunya, has failed the nation after his series of lectures on how he was going to revamp Ghana's economy while in operation. 
economically, they, the MPP, have failed us, he said. This is an independent watcher. He talked about independent watchers. This is an independent watcher who has given a commentary that is damning about this economy. So, Winston, the people this morning who are watching us know their circumstance. Indeed, the, it, is, it is the MPP that coined or the phrased so the people who are watching us this morning know their circumstance. It's not Dr. Baumia who will come and tell them. I rest my case. Winston, yes, in, um, Winston I can I can read in two to minutes, you I can read to you a litany issue. of uh, serious commendations of the economic management of, of this country by professors in Ghana, by the World Bank by Britain Woods institution, by, by, for instance, the Economic Intelligence Unit that has even predicted another round of uh, victory for this, for this government. And, and even by the Afrobarometer. And so we can go on and on and on. But the fact of the matter is that when my brother speaks of Shewa Sitinem Netwa Bapa, that is very correct. If you are unemployed before under the NDC because of some so-called policy credibility, and today, in the public space alone, we have employed over 350,000, and there is no inconsistency in these figures. People mention these figures respective to their sectors. The, 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 the information I have spoken to the employment in the public sector, the agri minister has spoken to the public uh, em employment within the agri sector as a fallout of the plenty for food and jobs. The minister for employment speaks of the global picture, and so it is not a question of consistencies. If you, 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 you today you are able to go to school without your parents having to pay the 2000 that they would have been paying for you to go to a boarding school, a secondary school, that one, Ubeche was sitting in you will notice that there's some 2,000 cities that is in your pocket. The, 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 the utilities that we used to pay in this country, Winston, skyrocketing rates that are, have gradually come down. Vice President Baumia spoke about it. A cumulative reduction, actually, if you check the, the, the facts. If you are a consumer of the utilities, you will notice that under the MPP, the arrangement is far better. If you are a user of electricity and you have to buy diesel for your generator because of pro pro prolonged doom saw under the NDC, and today there is no doom saw, you will notice that your lights are on. Okay. So I agree entirely. So let's move on to another issue. Thank you very much uh, on this one. Let's move on to an issue to do with corruption. In fact, it was uh, a major issue in the 2016 general elections. And uh, Piles, your party campaigned in fact on ending corruption uh, you said your party said you should be voted into office and you're going to put in place measures to ensure that we deal with corruption now the corruption perception index as we have it in 2017 you scored 40 in 2018 41 in 2019 also 41 over the last three years your scores have not been better than the previous administration which you tagged as corrupt. Why? Is corruption perception increasing under a government that promised to deal with corruption and end it, Piles? Thank you very much. No, Winston, it's, it cannot be so. And I uh, would address your minds to the figure. Mm -hmm. The figure actually shows that Ghana has once again begun picking up and we are working to better the perception. And these are perceptional issues and from the onset I can state that if you had an opposition that focuses on propaganda and, and put, puts a, a lot of misinformation and unfounded allegations into the environment these also have a tendency of affecting the perception because these are perceptional issues but be that as it may Winston, you will notice that there has been a gradual decline on Ghana's performance in the SWAL administration we came down from as high as uh, 40 something percent, uh, 40 something, the, the, and we got down to as low as 40 percent. The rating in 2017. So, just by way of information, correct. 2012, it was 45. 45. 2013, 46. 46. 2014, 48. Mm -hmm. And 2015, 47. 2016, 43. But in 2017, you were in government, it moves to 40. Yes. And 2018 is 41, 2019 is 41. Yes. It is still not above the 2016 
rate of 43. So we see, you will notice that under, that's the same point I'm making. You notice that under His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, when he was president, the, the rating actually took a nosedive. Now you speak of 40, which is for the year 2017, but which is a reflection of 2016. That is how these ratings are done. The 2019 one is released in 2020. Yes. So the, twi the, the, the 2017 uh, CPI is actually a verdict on 2016. And so you will notice that from 48 under John Mahama, it came down to 47, came down to 43, and came down to 40. You know this is a hold consistent hold decline. So this has been released in 2020. Yes. We're dealing with the 2019 one in 2020. Yes. In the same vein, the 2016 one was released in 2017. And the 2017 one released in 2018. In fact, I remember in 2018 when it was released and it was said that the government scored 40. It was because the release was in 2018. So it is not indicative that the figures... No, you're, you're, you're no hold on. See, you're, you're, this is 2020. You're, you're, you're twisting it. No, this is 2020. I mean, this is 2020. We have the figures here. This is 2020. Yes. And the statement says, the statement says, the Corruption Perception Index 2019 released worldwide this morning by Transparency International scores and ranks 180 countries and territories by their perceived levels of corruption, uh, public sector corruption. The CPI draws on 13 surveys and expert assessments to measure public sector uh, corruption, giving each country a score from one as highly corrupt to 100 very, uh, from zero highly corrupt to 100 very clean. The release says it is the 2019 Well, you figure. want to check. Hence, it's been released in 2020. That, that's what I'm saying to you, that yeah, so check, check the release for the figure that gives at 40. Mm -hmm. Most people would quote the year of release. So you want to check so that. So the year of release. But, but, but that's, so for that, me, that's... That, 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 but, but, but I'm saying that you check the year of release because I have list, read reportage that attributes this report to 2020. This one we are discussing today. Mm -hmm. That attributes it to 2020. And and so, but I'm saying that I've read narrative. So, so, so you, look, so, so so you so check. Now, so you check. Yes, but that, but for me, for me, me, I only wanted to make a point. I'll come to that. Yes. I only wanted to make a point about the decline that we were witnessing, which for us we should have watched and guarded against, but we did not. So that's number one. Number two is that I think that uh, it's feedback for, for, for government. And uh, like all of these uh, researches and so on and so forth, we take notice and we work to improve upon those areas that we, we need to improve on. Those areas that we are doing well, which are being held, held we work to uh, consolidate and improve even on them. And you will see clearly that this government has been doing a lot to fight corruption uh, in the public space and elsewhere. But you also notice that this particular CPI focuses on some specific areas of corruption. I'll come to that. But if you are a government, what do you do to fight corruption? For us, the first thing to do is to resource and empower the anti-graft agencies, the institutions of state that have the mandate to fight corruption. And you do that by granting them their total independence and also giving them the budgetary allocation that they, are needed to, that they need to work. And that's why when you check, for instance, parliament that has the oversight responsibility to check the executive, the budgetary allocation to parliament under our tenure compared to the uh, as well administration has seen a monumental increment we have continued to give more resources to Parliament to enable it do its oversight job. Again, the audit service. In 2014, Winston, under the NDC, the audit service was allocated 119 million cities and over. In 2015, 125 million cities. In 2016, Winston, the NDC allocated to the audit service 140 million and over. In 2017, when the MPP came, we pushed it to 186. Today, as we speak, the audit service allocation for 2020 is 395 million. That is what enables the, auditors, the, the, the audit service and the auditor general to be able to do the work. And no wonder we are seeing the results. What's it for me? Yes. No wonder we are seeing today a more active audit service than we used to see in the past. You come to the judicial service, where actually the corruption is supposed to be punished. The president by himself or a minister of state, or whatever, by themselves, cannot, as it were, uh, jail somebody, uh, or, 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 and so on and so forth. You have to go through the, the legal process. Mr. Maliba here is a lawyer. The way to, for, to, to be able to make sure that the justice system and, and delivers on their mandate is that you give them allocations. You check. In 2014, the judicial service was allocated 189 million and over. 
15, 199 million. Uh, today, 2020, the allocation to judicial service is 356 million. And so you notice that we are putting our money you're where talking, the fight... You're, you're talking about allocation. Yes. Fantastic. How about disbursements? The, look, the, 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 the ratio of allocation mm -hmm. to, dis, to disbursement for us is near perfect. Really? Uh, you can check. It's not near perfect when it comes to the no, um, special prosecution. That's not correct. You check. You check. And you. when was the last time you heard the office of the, the special prosecutor? The office of the special prosecutor last year alone was allocated 180 million Ghana cities. And, and uh, uh, disbursements have been tenuous and reliable and the man has not complained. And so let's not create uh, uh, problems when they are not. Again, you notice that this administration, even when uh, the, the most frivolous allegation made against any appointee, the president makes sure that these allegations are investigated. Now, it is not a question of listing uh, 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 a litany of trumped up charges to, to indicate that then somebody is corrupt. If that were the case, then the NDC would be the most corrupt entity. Because even the man at the center, the leadership of the NDC himself, former President John Dramani Mahama, well, he was alleged to have been corrupted by a Burkina Bay contractor. Mm. But the matter went through a system. Are we supposed to then just, therefore just say that because the allegation was made, so he is corrupt? If that is the standard, then it means that Mr. Mahama should have been, Mr. Mahama is corrupt. Again, you recall the, the allegation of some uh, 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 corruption when this Brazil aeroplane matter came up which are, we were told, rumors were that he was even being investigated by the president. So let me get to... So a mere allegation means that uh, uh, corruption has occurred. That means Mahama is corrupt. But I do not think that for any serious commentator on TV or on national radio, those should be the standards. Okay. Again, the responsibility of a government would be to investigate those matters, and those have been investigated. Winston, at the, at the second round, I'll give you some more information let me get to about it. our fight, yes, let me about get our to fight uh, but, but, but against so, corruption. Uh, having said all of these things, the figure still doesn't support the fact that you're doing very well, Pius. But let me get to uh, Ebram Amaliba. Uh, Ebram Amaliba, so from an NDC point of view, would you say this is uh, a vindication of the fact that uh, you probably were not as corrupt as you were painted, and that the ND MPP is more corrupt? When they were declining I am sure this morning, former President Mahama will walk on the streets of Accra with chest out because he was vilified, he was attacked, he was tagged by the opposition led by Nana Akufado as corrupt. And people bought into it and voted for them, I mean the MPP. Today, in their three years that they have been in power, the fight against corruption has been declared as unimpressive. <laughs> unimpressive because it is getting worse and worse and worse under their regime. Look, I'm sure Ghanaians have now become tired Hardly a week passes without an allegation of corruption coming out from this administration. Indeed, corruption has now become a way of life for government appointees in this country. So it is not surprising that we have retrogressed in the, 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 the rankings. But when you say it's become a way of life, what do you mean? <laughs> I am saying that each passing day, mm. each week, allegations of corruption pop up. It first started when the president was selling seats close to him. You remember that seat uh, matter? When the president was <laughs> the selling president seats. The president didn't sell those seats. And this is corruption. Seriously. Ashim Morton uh, was the one who said he was the president of the Millennium Excellence Foundation. So that's what he meant. So he was the one people should pay hundred dollars or whatever amount and sit close, close to, to him. And sit close to him. Yes. He went there with Ambassador Victor Blaho. Okay. So of you think NDC. that you think that you would go and pay hundred dollars and sit close to Ashimoti? Because he's he not has told you that story and you believe it. What? Look, it is absolutely clear that since the commencement of these rankings, 
the most corrupt government is the one headed by Nana Adudanko Ekuvado. I am not saying it. The record speaks for themselves. My brother here has even contributed <laughs> to the perception. How? You remember the Australia visa saga? <laughs> he was neck deep. In what? In the scandal. <laughs> he was that investigated sent, and cleared. That sent, that sent uh, 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 Ghanaians to Australia and tagged them as journalists. But he you was are investigated and cleared. You are a journalist. You should be worried. You're not listening to him. You should be worried that he was alleged to have been included, uh, to, to, to be part of those who orchestrated that uh, uh, deal. So it's true. Now, you look at uh, uh, P PDS. Clearly, if you take PDS alone, you will not term it as corruption. It is more than corruption. What For PDS, mean? what happened in PDS is called organized crime. Organized crime war, where persons connected to the president masterminded the takeover of ECG and market to the disadvantage of you and me who are uh, 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 taxpayers. How? <laughs> you don't know how. You don't know how PDS, which, which is now being abrogated by the government, was handled by this administration. Go and read it. Look. <laughs> For those who are watching us, how was it handled? It's not about me, it's about those who are watching. So you never saw the situation where <laughs> cronies of the president put together themselves and took over ECG, named themselves as PDS, and when they were and requested to put in money so as to revamp ECG, they failed to do it. Rather, they took our, our the, the, the money we pay, what is it, um, the, the, the tariffs we paid, and rather sought to use that to pay for the amount that they were supposed to bring into the company. So if such a deal then, is cancelled, is, is, is that not an indication that it was a bad deal? It was because of their inability to agree to the sharing of the loot that resulted into the attempt to say that they want to abrogate it and they Allegedly. abrogated it. And so, look, see, you were at 41 last year and your score was 78. So 41 was the, uh, where they were. Mm. Their score was 78. Today, they have dropped to 80. From 48, the rankings have dropped to 80. Mm. That you were 41 and your rankings was 48, uh, 78 last year. Today you are 41, your ranking is 80. You have dropped. That cannot be, hmm. as he alleges, an improvement. Okay. I haven't said that. It has become abundantly clear that the MPP has lost the fight against corruption. And, the, and if the history of fighting corruption in this country is being written, the story will be told of how the MPP mounted the high moral horse of incorruptibility. And when they were given power, they plunged this country into serious economic as well as corruption difficulties. Okay. He talks about uh, provision of resources to agencies that are supposed to fight corruption. Why? If in your three years you borrowed 80 billion Ghana cities, what is expected of you? To whom more is given, more is expected. So if you've borrowed 
just three years, close to 80 billion cities. Why won't you increase allocations to agencies? You want to compare that to our 40 billion <coughs> in our whole four years, and you are beginning to compare. Uh, you gave this amount, and we gave this amount. You have borrowed in three years than all government from Nkrumah's regime. So why would allocations to those institutions not, 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 not go higher than the other uh, government? Just, just by way of fact. Does that fight corruption? That in itself does not fight corruption. But, even, uh, uh, but when you say they borrowed in three years more than all governments from the Nkrumah regime, in 2009 when they were leaving office, uh, the country's debt was at around $10 billion. 2009? Yes, when they left office. It was $10 billion. We are talking about today. Yes, I know. But if you say they borrowed, I mean, more than all governments put together. But the NDC in eight years... I'm borrowed, saying that you are not The NDC saying. borrowed in eight years borrowed about $110 billion. I'm saying that in three years, mm -hmm. in three years, they borrowed $80 billion. No government in three years have borrowed sure. that much. That's true. That's the point I'm making. So, great. So let and me I'm get saying you. that mm -hmm. the fact that you allocate resources to institutions does not in itself fight corruption. The attitude of the president, the conduct of the president in itself does not encourage the fight against corruption. Mm. Recently, you saw what happened in Tamale. Let me, let me get to Paris to react. You saw what happened in Tamale. Because I need to get to the uh, ECC before we wrap it up. Where so uh, 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 tricycles were literally yes. taken away. So hold on on that. Hold on on that. Let me get to Paris in a minute, and then we move on to well, another Winston, issue. I think that this by way these, are, these are serious discussions, and we shouldn't trivialize. If you read the, and I, the, I challenge our member to go and read the release again, you will notice that this corruption is not just uh, for the politically exposed. These measures... Uh, in fact, it focuses on politics and, and uh, 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 money and corruption and yeah, so on and so forth. That, yes. And so uh, if uh, a policeman, and f excuse me for using that example, uh, if a policeman stops a trotro and the perception is that he's taking some money, this will also affect the uh, perception. And that is why I'm saying that the way to fight these kinds of corruption is to be able to empower and build the capacities of the institutions to work. And so it is not just about ministers and deputy ministers. That is rather a, a myopic view of the discussion. And it is only a desperate political actor who wants to win power at all costs, even if it means uh, throwing uh, into the system unfounded allegations. That will argue the way the argument has panned out. Because we have to appreciate these things holistically. Be be if, you don't do that, if you don't do that, and I wanted to do what Mr. Maliba has done, it will be a disaster for the NDC. But I'm saying to you that you notice that when you even ask him some of the issues, Mr. Ma Amaliba does not even understand some of the issues because they are, they are, they are beautiful sound bites and they are propaganda material. It is easy to throw about. But when you ask him about the evidence, how did this happen? How does the PDS? Then he comes back to you to say that, but you, you are not aware. Go and read. You are supposed to tell us. You are the one making the allegation. It is because in the matter of the PDS, there is no evidence of corruption. In fact, what we have seen is a government that is bold to take action against a practice that the government itself found out to have been incorrect. Then he runs to Australia. In the case of Australia, and I've noticed that it's the strategy of the NDC that any time they see me, they will throw this thing at me. So I've, I'm, I'm getting used to, it. Used to it. But no. But the fact of the matter is that Mr. Mahama was investigated and cleared. Oh, that is fine. Institutions of state investigated and cleared him. That is fine. But any other person cannot be cleared by the same institutions of state. If that were the standard, and I made this point earlier, if that were the standard, that no matter what, let's throw an allegation, and even when you are investigated and cleared, you are still guilty, then Mr. Mahama is the number one guilty person in this country. Because we have a litany of allegations against him. Some of which, some of, some of which even he, as sitting the president and as sitting vice president, he was investigated. And when the question was asked to him straightforward, have you been corrupt? He couldn't answer straightforward. He was asking in this life or in the last life. If you have been he corrupt... As a president or in his personal life. Yeah, but if you have been corrupt, you have been corrupt. Whether in your personal life or your, in your presidential life, you have been corrupt, you have been corrupt. That is it. So anybody who has been corrupt, who has not been corrupt, when the question is asked, they will, they will uh, answer it without, uh, without a blinker. And so that is the situation. But I'm saying that let us appreciate these matters holistically, nationalistically, and let us admit that as the political class, 
we are not the only guilty parties in this matter. It's a national problem. And so we have to find national solutions to it. And let's stop away, uh, move away from this. Okay. You are uh, a public petty, officer. You are a public petty, officer. Petty, petty, petty you partisan, are a public officer. Uh, the uh, report yes, that cleared you. Where is the report? Where is the report? Well, if you want a copy, so I, I am telling you that. If you want a copy, I am telling you that that's a concussion that <laughs> you have declared. <laughs> Provide us with the report. <laughs> we can all read. In any case. I should bring it to your office or to your house. No, provide. But you no, should give it to him. But yeah, you I, have I, been accused <laughs> severely of your involvement in the Australian visa saga. Because you don't even understand. Have, why don't happens. you make it public? You have heard people talk why about Why don't you Australia? make it public? Uh, uh, so uh, I'm saying that for you problem. this morning, hold on, hold on. for you this morning, you shouldn't be talking because you have contributed to the <laughs> downward trend of the perception. This is just perceptional, but the reality, I'll tell you, is more than this. Mr. Maliba, your this problem, is just perception. Your problem, but the reality of corruption under this administration is far more than that. Listen. Look, oh. we're between the two of us. Between, minute, between, no, between, you, yes. between the two the two governments. Who is more corrupt? That's what you want and to I do. And I am saying that, and I'm saying that the That's matter do. has been settled by the Transparency International. That is the most credible institution. When it comes to uh, 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 perception of corruption in the world, Transparency International okay. has said that so, you are more corrupt. He's, 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 that's you are more corrupt. Mr. You don't need to shout. And I don't understand you why don't need to shout. we need you to go still, in a minute. Fire. You still, you still make the point that to, you, need to, you still make the point that and this is corrupt. You need the oh, facts. Hold on, the facts. Yes, the facts. I have. A, I, I'm look, the facts. Oh, in the you are more Hold on. Look, the words he's choosing means that he doesn't even understand what we are discussing. The CPI is not about the government which is being corrupt. Ah. It's about the public space. Ah. Yes. And the public space is not only governments that are in the public space. Look at, so look at, please, look, you need look, to understand. It's not only ministers <laughs> and appointees that are in the public <laughs> space. So you need you, to understand you, that. You, now, number you, two. You. Oh, please. You see, your problem is that uh, you, you don't have enough information it on all of these MPP things. So, oh, that Mr. Maliba, please, let's show some respect to our Let's show some respect to I don't want him to take up our half my turn. So I'm saying that you have to on your ignorance is your problem so you it's you, you have to self-educate you have to understand what happens with australia before you come and speak australia about was it. a disaster for oh, you that's the point. please you have to understand what happens then you come if you come on air don't rationalize this way you your expose wrongdoing. your ignorance but, don't I'm, saying rationalize that, your but I'm saying that i am used to it don't rationalize look, your wrong you are deflating from the issue by attacking my person no 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 the issue is, is that look winston the NDC under John Mahama, the ratings came down from 48 to 47 to 43. We must be asking what occasions okay. that drop. So finally, now, under the NPP, we are picking from 40. We are going to 41. It may be marginal, but we are going forward. Okay. Under you, you are coming down. Mahama's West you were coming down. Mahama's West performance was 43. You were coming okay. down. Your best performance is 41. So, what did so why that? can't you Look, speak to listen, the figures? Listen. What did the figures that indicate that? As a student that of statistics. The, 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 the as a student of statistics. Your best performance is 41. I hear you. Mahama's best performance is 43. I hear, I hear you. I hear you. So but how can you say that 41 no is better than 43? As a student of statistics, yes. if you do uh, the, 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 you, 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 you stretch the, the data, Okay. What you'll find out is that if the NDC had won the 2016 election, because of the steady decline that we have noticed, if you do the discounting, you would have noticed that would have been in the 35 right. or 36. So now, 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 if you do the extrapolation, now, if you do the extrapolation, if you do the extrapolation for us, because you notice that there is increasing. It may be marginal. But what it means is that if you give the MPP a few more years, it will go back to the 48. Thank you. And that will be the Thank you very much, Fire. Thank you also. Thank you also. Thank you also. Thank you Thank you also. 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 Thank you Thank you also. Very much. Yeah, and, no, I should. And thank you also. Who Pius. shouldn't be speaking about corruption today? Um, gentlemen, that'll be your time with the last. Thank you very much, uh, Brahma Malaba. And thank you also, Pius and Amhajide, uh, for joining us on News Review.